This is an examination of Samson Resources, a company that was based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was an upstream oil and gas company that filed for bankruptcy in September of 2015 due to drops in oil prices. And this is a brief overview of the oil and gas marketplace. So a few of the obstacles in the oil and gas industry that we would like to just bring up are the little correlation of time between spending money and actually receiving money, um, whether that be exploration or discovery, however you uh, want to make the money, however much you spend before that really doesn't have anything to do with how much you make. Uh, also, there's a large amount of time sometimes between when you initially invest in a project and when you see any return on your investment in the future. So in order to combat these obstacles, oil and gas companies will try to spend large amounts of money uh, in order to find those, those big, big discoveries that lead to um, re their revenue covering their costs. Um, so they put an emphasis on this large growth by, by spending a lot of money in small places for this, this big reward to, uh, to help them out and so, to help them grow. Um, so this can lead to companies taking on large amounts of debt without actually having the operating revenue to fulfill their debt obligations because they think that in the future they'll find you know this reward to cover that debt instead of relying on whatever their operations are now. So this plan actually works pretty well as long as prices remain favorable or high or predictable. Um, but in the case of Samson, the prices dropped and they were forced to honor some of their debt obligations by taking on even more debt. And Samson's capital strategy kind of emphasized this problem because they were aggressively trying to expand and acquire new assets in order to grow the company at an accelerated rate, which was fine during this high, this period where gas prices were, or oil prices were really high. And one of their biggest, one of their strategies of what they were doing to pay for their operations were through their, just what they generated from their operating income, from the sale of assets they no longer needed, and through debt that they were borrow, borrowing from creditors. And this wasn't really an issue while the commodity market, where the price of oil was very high, but considering Samson was running a loss since 2012, their operations really weren't covering, or their operating income wasn't covering their cost of their, their business being run. And once the prices dropped significantly, their assets devalued since they were using full cost method, they were already having to repair assets, so that was hurting them. And they, were not, they weren't generating an income anyway, so their operating income dropped even more and they were running even bigger, or larger losses. And this finally hurt them in where they were having to pay for everything with their, the money that they were borrowing from creditors. Yeah, essentially with the assets, their plan that they kind of out, outlined in, in some of their reports was that if things you know started to get bad and they needed some money to pay back some of this debt, then they would sell their assets. The problem is when the prices drop and everyone's hurting, nobody wants to pay what you would normally expect for your assets, so you don't end up having success in doing that. So, uh, like we said, they ended up having to borrow. Um, and they borrowed a lot uh, at the end of it, uh, September 2015. Um, Samson Resources filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy for a total of $4.3 billion, uh, half of it being secured and the other half being completely unsecured. Um, this debt uh, was structured in three different sources of credit. Um, the oldest being a revolving credit line from J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, this revolving credit line was significantly paid off, um, but not from operations uh, revenue or their own cash. Um, unfortunately, Samson Resources, uh, their, subsidi their subsidiary, Samson Investment Company, um, had to issue $2.25 billion uh, in senior notes. Um, the majority of this was used to cover their operating expenditures and also to pay down some of that, uh, that revolving credit line. Another source as a um, credit line that was extended uh, through Samson Investment uh, Corporation as well. Um, this was a billion dollar um, 
debt obligation that they use $835 million worth uh, to pay that credit line uh, from JP Morgan Chase. And as you can see, constant term, these people are uh, restructuring their debt by issuing new debt to pay off old debt. Um, there's no there's no actual operations revenue going in to pay off this debt. Um, as Grant explained earlier, uh, there's a lot of capital that's needed to run an EMP production operation. Um, these guys are waiting uh, to hopefully find a big resource, find a big asset that's able to produce great quantities to sell at a good price when uh, market conditions are favorable. But when these conditions aren't favorable and they're not generating revenue to pay off these obligations, um, they they had to turn to the last thing where they could get cash, and that was uh, by issuing new debt through their own subsidiary. And unfortunately, it just became um, too overbearing for them. And in the end, racking up $4.9 billion in debt, um, they weren't able to continue forward. So one thing that we found in the uh, statements is that their long-term debt was fairly high at the end of 2013. Um, it was about $3.5 billion in, at the end of 2013. Um, in 2014, all of that long-term debt was changed to current uh, debt. So basically, in the, in the report, it says that this was due to an uncertainty regarding their ability to comply with restrictive covenants. Basically, they had to, they had to reconsider this, this debt all the way from long-term to current because they didn't think they could pay it. So essentially in 2014, they had zero long-term debt, um, which basically means none of the long-term debt that they had before they could consider payable. When a stockholder or investors see this thing happen on a, on a statement, they're, they're gonna run for the hills because they know, I mean, it's on the statement that says that they didn't think they could pay it. Um, but anytime that it, there's a reclassification like that, it's going to be a red flag, which can really hurt your company. And there was a six month window in where that reclassification was made. Uh, when exactly it was, we don't know. We know that the 10Q uh, for July 31st of 2014 was issued and that was still classified as long term debt. And they had a considerably low amount of current liabilities. Uh, but when they released the 10K uh, for the end of operations in 2014, there was zero long-term debt and all uh, 3.9 billion of it was classified as a current liability, which is a huge restructuring of the balance sheet. And this restructuring of the debt was basically caused by how their strategy to run the business was. Since their assets, they couldn't sell them, they weren't making anything from operations, they had to turn to the debt. But the problem was, since they were borrowing more and more debt to pay off these other, you know, these other creditors, it just wasn't going to work. And this is where they got stuck, where it's like they realized we cannot pay back any of this debt. We can't uphold our debt covenants. And that's kind of why they had to reclassify it, because they knew that they weren't going to be able to pay with it for operations, and they probably weren't going to be able to acquire more debt to pay off debt. So... As we've mentioned, Samson filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on September 16th, 2015. So one question that um, that we ask is how did accounting fail Samson? The first thing we look at, uh, we saw there was a pretty big correlation in a lot of the companies that filed for bankruptcy in 2015, um, and a majority of them were using the full cost accounting method. Uh, and we're not saying that the full cost accounting method is a bad practice of accounting. Uh, it's actually really great for smaller EMP companies that aren't able to take unsuccessful efforts and take them directly to the income statement as an expense. Um, instead, these people are able to capitalize some of these costs and wait for that big uh, successful well that they drilled that's able to be an actually capitalized asset. Um, this full cost method kind of gets these smaller EMP companies in a bind when uh, see commodity price prices are dropping and these assets become severely impaired. Um, and they have so many of them capitalized that it starts to really reflect on their income statement in a bigger toll than mm -hmm. it would have initially. Um, and it's, it's all hitting it at one time, um, causing serious losses on the income statement. And uh, to say for final, the, the full cost method is, is great for these EMP companies when commodity prices are high enough, um, but it's just, it's not as conservative as a successful efforts method would be.
So lastly, we want to highlight how much of a driver for decision making accounting really is. Uh, in an industry uh, like with a commodity such as this, there are ups and downs and there are constant analytics and, um, and experts looking into what's going to happen in the future and decisions are based off of that. How much money do we have? How much can we afford? Um, how much money do we need in the future? Cash flow management, you know, how much debt do we need or how much debt can we repay um, realistically? So one of the gives and takes is a conservative accounting approach versus an aggressive growth strategy. And if an oil and gas company were to decide, well, prices could go down in the future by, you know, more than double, um, they could be more than cut in half. So we're going to be very conservative. Those those companies are going to get run over by their competition. Um, now, there is a thin line um, between conservative accounting and, and playing it safe and, you know, just, you know, walking the line of we're going to make this much money and this is what we think that we can do. But when companies aggressively try to grow like we think Samson did by taking out so much debt um, in their first two years of reporting, uh, you're going to run into problems if prices drop. If you look at the the commodity prices throughout the past few years before that, they stayed relatively stable and very high in comparison to, to where they went. In 2014, towards the end, you got a drop and it had plummeted to in 2015. Um, so that's one of your gives and takes and some of their decisions were based on growth when some other companies stockpiled cash or um, or saved for the future and looked out for, for problems like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is just a case of Samson trying to expand too rapidly without first kind of getting a nice general base to fall back on if, for instance, the commodity market drops. They might not have been able to plan for such a severe drop, but they might have been able to at least withstand it until at least stabilizes. Um, kind of a story of a hollow balance sheet. Um, if that balance sheet would have been structured with some uh, cash or fine-tuned assets, uh, maybe they could have pulled out of this recession. Exactly. Thank you.